Hello, today we are going to teach you how to make a fantastic and economical strawberry shortcake. One that is delicious and nutritious. It's got nuts, it's got coconut, which is a nut or a seed, and strawberries. What could be better than that? Okay, so we're going to make a large strawberry shortcake because I'm going to assume that you ladies are very hungry and you are going to want to eat a lot of it. So in this recipe, if you want a really light shortcake, one that is not very dense, then you put more coconut flakes in it than you do almonds. I'm going to go with a medium denseness. So I don't want it overly dense, but I don't want it really, really light and flaky either. So we're going to go with equal parts of almonds and coconut flakes. But if you want a really light one, you would go with two cups of almonds and four cups of coconut flakes. But I'm going to go with three and three, okay? And so our almonds, they have been soaked and they have been dehydrated again. So if you don't have time to soak them, then if you don't have time to dehydrate them, then don't soak them because it will make them wetter in this particular instance, okay? So either soak and dehydrate your almonds or just use them without being soaked. And then three cups of coconut flakes. Okay. That's six cups. So I'm going to start off with one and a half cups of sugar. If you like it sweeter, you can always go two cups of sugar, but the strawberries are going to be a little sweet, so I like my desserts not too sweet. We're going to go with one and a half cups. So that's seven and a half cups of dry ingredients. And then we buzz it up. Okay, so our shortcake now is starting to look like this in terms of graininess. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to buzz it just a little bit more so that I don't see the coconut flake. Okay, so now you probably want me to measure. All right, so I'm going to pour myself half a cup of kefir in here and then we'll end up with what's left. So of course this isn't sticky, right? Like if I go like this, it's all crumbling apart. So what we want is we want cake that holds together. So as liquid, some people say, well, I like to use just water. I don't like to use just water for anything. I like to use water kefir, or I like to use uh, the coconut water. Either one of those is a good option. So we're going to start off with a quarter cup of liquid. And I don't want it to be super wet, so the quarter cup might be sufficient. I'm going to take it out actually and dump it into a bowl because I don't want my fingers to get caught on the S plate. And then if we want to add more, then we can. There we go. And at this point, all we're trying to do is mix it. We're not trying to grind it anymore. So you don't need to keep it in the food processor. Once the texture of the one that you want is good enough. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to massage And I really do think that a quarter cup is good. If you're not going to eat your cake right away, then you want your cake to be moisture. Like if, if you're one person and you're living on your own and you're going to be the only person eating this cake, then you want your cake to be moisture because you're going to freeze it probably. And when you freeze it, it dries it out. So for the restaurant and for right now, I would leave it like this because I'm going to serve this cake within a day. Within 24 hours, usually it gets sold. But if you're going to be freezing it, then the freezer dries out some of the moisture, and then you're going to get like a dry, crummy cake, and that's not what you're after. So right now, with the quarter cup, it's holding together very nicely. So that's good. How many people want me to add some more moisture? Or this is how I would eat it if I was eating it fresh. So I'm going to assume you're going to make it for a special occasion, and you're probably going to eat it all. Okay? There we go, our cake batter is done. So this cake, by the way, you can substitute quite a few fruits for this using almost the same principle. When stone fruit season comes in, then I'll teach you how to season peaches and do things a little bit different, but it's the same kind of concept. These are our strawberries. So to prepare them, usually what I do is I check them. If there's any soft spots, I remove it. Any, like even slightly brown spots, I'm kind of a fanatic, I remove it because it's going to sit in your cake 
So you want your strawberries to be absolutely perfect. And the rest of them, there you go. That one's perfect. So it's not a discoloration that I'm talking about. Like, if it's not soft, then you leave it. So you've got your strawberries now. Some people like to cut along this edge. I like my strawberries to look really pretty inside a cake, so I cut on the long edge, like that. And it doesn't matter if you've mangled your strawberry, you still just cut on the long end. When you cut them into small pieces, nobody can tell that it wasn't a perfectly whole strawberry. There we go. So, this is a whole pound of strawberries. This, by the way, is a pound container. Okay? It's not a pint container, it is a one pound container. And they were selling them at Vineyard Farmer's Market for $3.50. We usually get ours from TD Willie, and TD Willies are in a pint container, and so obviously you would need to use more than one pint. There we go. And you probably wanted me to measure. That was one little handful, quarter cup, quarter cup of sugar, okay? And the reason why we're doing the sugar is because we want our strawberries to become juicy. And so we're gonna start massaging them. Strawberries are one of my favorite fruit for caramelizing. I have no idea why anybody ever exposes them to heat. Look at the beautiful, rich red color. And you know that you have massaged it enough when there is no more granules of sugar. The sugar should become a liquid. It should become a sauce. If you can feel the granules, you just haven't massaged it long enough. And, and some people are worried that they're going to destroy the strawberries. Um, I'm lifting it like this and then I'm squeezing it through my hands like this, okay? I don't really see how that's going to destroy the strawberries. It usually doesn't in my case, especially with strawberries. It becomes a liquid syrup very, very quickly, but that's how I'm doing it. I, I grab it, squeeze it, let it run through my hands, and kind of massage it like that. Coconut palm sugar, yes. And it's a natural, unrefined sugar. Okay, so we sliced it like this. So you want to keep the front of your blade on your cutting board and you want to lift the back each time. Okay? And when you do that enough times you get very fast at it. So if you've come to the class before you know that we love these spring form pans. They were on sale at Cresco. Hope you guys went down and got them. We saran wrap them and you want the lip to be downwards and you want the flat surface to be at the top so that we can slide the pieces of cake off because there is no oil that will help it. Okay, we pop it in and we close it. Then I push down on it, make sure it's seated in there very nicely. Then we take, if this is your batter, I want just a third of it for the bottom because I'm not trying to cover anything other than the metal. And later, I'm going to want to cover all the strawberries. And this pan, by the way, is a wider pan than we used to make. So sometimes we don't end up with a very high cake. For the cafe, we end up using more ingredients. But if you have a smaller pan, this is like another inch bigger than the pans that we used to have. And that inch really does make a difference. So if you see little pieces of steel, you just drop some batter on there and you push it down. Okay, so now we've got a whole pound of strawberries. What's fantastic about that, of course, is that they're eating fruit. How many people don't get their five servings of fruits and vegetables every day? Quite a few of them. And this way, we're helping them to get that. And they do compress down quite a bit after you've massaged them, so you're not gonna get a heaping layer of them. That's how it looks, very pretty. And then, it's almost as though it's a graham cracker crust, you know, on the top. You just wanna kind of take both your hands and just do gentle crumbles all the way around. Okay. And you just want to cover just gently at first. So you notice I haven't pushed down at all. And 
Now we've got more than enough batter to do a nice thick layer on top. And that's what we're after. Okay, so this is what it's looking like. You don't see any strawberries. And then gently, you wanna just push it into place. So what I would recommend is that at this point, after you've done it, I wash my hands and I wet them just a little bit. And the reason why you wet them is so that none of the crumbs stick to your hands and you go around the edges and just tuck it all the way down. I mean, it looked fine before. I'm just a bit of a perfectionist. The nice thing about shortcakes is you don't have to put them in the fridge. You don't have to put them in the freezer to set. This is ready to go right now. So if you're trying to debate between what's the best way to do it, this is what I would recommend as a quick dessert. And we have a very pretty shortcake. And that is our strawberry shortcake. Four layers, shortcake, strawberry, shortcake, and strawberries again.